We're actually right here at uh, the 12th Annual Capital Link Sustainability Forum. The question is, can it actually be sustainability at the time of geopolitical and energy crisis? Well, it depends. Again, there's a lot of as issues of concern that could affect uh, the issue right now of stability in the region. We have the Ukraine war. We have energy crisis. We have other factors in the Middle East. We have the issue with Turkey, as aggressive as they are, which doesn't help in the situation. We just had elections in Italy. We have upcoming elections in Greece, probably next year, 2023. Elections in Turkey, and again, the U.S. general, the U.S. midterm elections. All those play into factor, especially on the financial side, what Wall Street does, what the United States does, especially the interest rates on the rise again. So all that, put it in a pot, it's boiling. Basically, there's an issue here where a lot of work has to be done between all parties involved, all stakeholders, all governments. We have NATO, EU versus Russia, especially, again, going back to the tra tra tragic war of the Ukraine, the loss of life, the loss of the energy chain, as we have saw, the loss of the food chain, and we're talking about a sustained factors of all those three. So there's a lot of work to be done. The issue is how can we find alternatives? That's going to be the main issue, to sustain stability. Can you get energy alternatives, food alternatives, geopolitical, uh, how can I say, not have this issue of tensions in the region. So all those play into a, a big role, and you can't have one without the other. So in my opinion, if we can see how this winter, and it's going to be a rough winter because of the shock, the sticker shock of Russia implementing a restriction of gas into Eastern Europe. So that's going to play a key role. Can we have other alternatives? The U.S. will be providing as much LNG to Greece and to other countries, is it enough? On the long term, I think we can sustain the energy issue. There'll be more initiatives. Secretary Kerry was here, initiative of green energy. And I guess what's happening is you're pushing up that timetable. Look, this crisis didn't happen before, dur uh, be uh, during the Ukraine war, it happened before. We knew the end game of what Russia was trying to do. It's trying to be a major player in Europe and by, by using the energy card, sort of threats and aggression. So if we can find short-term solutions right now to ease the pain, we'll be in good shape. If not, we're going to have to look at long-term solutions to be permanent solutions. Same thing with the food supply chain. Greece, especially Greece, is going to play a key role because of the port of Alexandrupoli, Kavala, Thessaloniki, and even in Womenica. Can we get Alexand Alexandrupoli with maybe a second rail from the Bulgarian border all the way down to Alexandrupoli to be the new import-export uh, port from Bulgaria? You have Romania, then the Danube River, you have Ukraine, you have Eastern Europe. That's going to be, play a, an important role, and then you don't have to rely on Turkey or the China Silk Road. And now those are important factors. People have to look in the future, uh, short term, I think the problem with the Europeans is they trusted Russia too much. And I think this is something that uh, it is going to be painful. But again, look, the United States has been a leader. We saw the history of the United States going back to World War II. As this year, we're celebrating the Truman Doctrine, the 75th anniversary of Truman Doctrine. So again, history does, re uh, history does re repeat itself. So we're just going to be very cautious of where we're heading to make sure that we have a... Uh, uh, stability in the pol political scene, regardless of the Italian elections. Have the EU bond together. There can't be any uh, issues with countries not agreeing to a one policy. NATO, in the same uh, instance, coming in and looking at stability. I know Turkey has been uh, unstable and being provocative on uh, an aggressor on the region, its neighbors. So I think all these issues are very important that we make sure that we look to a stable future. And I think the United States has to step up and play probably a more important role using the NATO 
avenue. I know European Union is a different neighborhood. The European Union also has to work together with NATO and the United States. What do you think the contribution of the Greek diaspora could be in this road of the sustainability when it comes to the U.S. and Greek politics? Well, if you're talking about the Greek diaspora in the United States, and we want to talk about the Greek elected diaspora, we have 43 elected officials in the United States. We have the Lieutenant Governor of California, Lieutenant Governor of Connecticut, Secretary of State of Vermont, five members of Congress, Nevada, Dina Titus, Nicole Malitakis in New York, Chris Pappas in New Hampshire, Gus Filarakis in Florida, and John Sarbanes in Congress. Next to them, the colleagues in state governments. We have 15 state senators and 19 state representatives elected in 20 states. That plays a key role because we work with our colleagues in government, our two U.S. senators, which makes up 40 percent of the United States Senate, 40 members, direct access to their U.S. senators. Senator Reid is my senator. He's a chairman of Armed Services Committee. Senator Barrasso in Wyoming is the uh, ranking member in the Foreign Relations Committee. He was former chair. Stefan Pappas, a Greek-American state senator, very close to him. So with using that tool, communication with our colleagues in government to inform them, educate them on the issues of concern is going to play a key role. And we saw the votes, the votes of blocking Turkey uh, out of the F, getting them out of the F-35 program, the passing of the military agreement between Greece and the United States, again, the issue with the F-16s, but again, also encouraging the United States, the Greek elected diaspora from our states. We have many Fortune 500 companies in the states who are elected to invest in Greece. You saw the tourism boom. So all these play a key role as decision makers. Our 43 elected members, we're hoping that we can increase those members uh, in the upcoming elections of 2022. And we'll see how that is going to play out. So I guess we're in a good position. And as you can see, anytime you open up the media, you see many of us in the media fighting for the cause of Hellenism.